Hello and welcome to EduMedia YouTube channel, your number one source of credible, accurate and educative information. This is the second part of Graphic Design 101 series. In the first part, we looked at introduction to graphic design, what design is and is not. There's a link to part one of this series in the description section below, do check it out if you haven't. In this video, we're going to look at Adobe products and their uses, we'll dive deeper into Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. And then we'll go ahead to explore the Photoshop workspace. Adobe is known for the creation of multimedia and creativity software products. Adobe products have been the de facto industry standard in graphics editing. The products include Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere Pro, InDesign, Illustrator, Lightroom, Dreamweaver, Fireworks, and so on and so forth. Photoshop, as we all know, is one of the most predominant applications used for image editing and manipulation. It's also used for photo retouching, graphic design, web and app prototyping. We can also use it for 3D modeling. Illustrator, on the other hand, is used for vector graphics and illustration. After effects, we use that for visual effects, motion graphics and compositing. In design, is for desktop publishing. And then Lightroom is a great tool for photographers. Premiere Pro is used for video editing and then Dreamweaver is for creating websites. In this series, we will focus on Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. Photoshop is an advanced imaging and design application. It is used to create, enhance and edit images, artwork and illustrations. Normally, you combine photos, graphics and text to create entirely new images in Photoshop. Photoshop is primarily used to edit 2D images. Despite this, it also provides 3D image editing functionalities. Typical projects you can complete in Photoshop include image manipulation, compositing, converting images from one format to another, image printing, and so on and so forth. Take notice that Photoshop is not a drawing program. It is a bitmap editor. Now, bitmap images are stored as a series of tiny dots that are called pixels. A pixel is a very small square that is assigned a color and then arrange in a pattern to form image. That's all about Photoshop. The next program we're going to look at is Illustrator. Unlike Photoshop, Illustrator is vector-based design and drawing application. It allows for the creation of posters, symbols, logos, patterns, and icons. Vector graphics are composed of lines and curves that are defined by mathematical objects called vectors. Vectors describe a graphic according to its geometric characteristics. Vector images can be resized without losing quality. These attributes are what make vector-based programs different to bitmap-based programs such as Adobe Photoshop. The next subtopic we're going to look at is Photoshop, the workspace in Photoshop, and how we can navigate our way around it. For that, I will switch to my blank Photoshop application. So this is my blank Photoshop screen. Starting at the top, we have the main menu. Directly below the main menu is the option bar. The option bar will change depending on the tool that you are using at a particular point in time. So on my left here, I have the toolbox here. So for example, if I select a zoom tool here, you can see the option bar changes to reflect the tool I have selected, giving me the zoom in and zoom out options, as well as other zoom uh, options to control my window. Same applies to any other tool. If I select the type tool, the commands here on the options bar changes, giving me the options to select the font style, the font sizes, the alignment, and so on and so forth. At the far right side of the application, I have the workspace switcher here. Now, with this command, I can select what and how my workspace should be structured. At the moment, mine is set as essentials. If I switch this to another option, for example, typography, the workspace will change slightly, bringing the typographical tools closer for easy and quick access. But then I will leave my essentials. That's okay for me. At this point, I'm going to use a mini project to highlight some of the features in Photoshop. This is the project or design I will use in this, in this video. I'm going to redesign this simple project in here. Before we continue, this design contains a lot of subtle features. Uh, there's an image bounded by a circle and the circle has a black and white gradient. Also, there's a subtle shadow at the bottom at the bottom of the circle. 
the test at the top will help us explore the type tool and its functions. Click on file and select new. Name the file as the menu. Change the unit to inches and set the width as 14 inches, the height as 10 inches. Change the resolution to 100 pixels per inch and then select white as background content. Now click on OK. Click on the layer panel to open it. At the bottom of the layer panel, click on adjustment layer and select solid color. From the color picker, pick a color of your choice and click OK. Now click on the shape tool on the toolbar at the left side of the screen. Select ellipse tool. On the option bar, click on the fill color and select a color of your choice. Then click on stroke and set stroke width as 7 points. Click on stroke color picker and select gradient. Select the gradient type you want and press enter. Now hold down the shift key then click and drag your mouse on the canvas to create a perfect circle. Position the circle at an appropriate location. Click on file, select place, navigate to the location of your image and double click on it. Press enter to commit the changes. Now hold down the shift key then click on the corner of the image and drag to resize it proportionally. Press enter to commit the changes. Position the image directly onto the circle shape. In the layers panel, right click on the image and select create clipping mask. The image will be clipped into the circle shape beneath it. Click on the type tool from the toolbox. Select the font style font size as well as the font color you prefer. Click on the canvas and type the menu. Click on the check mark here to commit the changes. Position the test at an appropriate location. On the layers panel, click on create new layer at the bottom of the layer panel. Select the new layer created. Click on the brush tool to select it at the toolbox. Click on the foreground color and select black. With the brush tool still selected, right click on the canvas and set the brush size as 800 pixels. Set the brush hardness to be 0%. Press enter. Left click at the center of the circle. Use the rectangular marquee tool to erase the top half of the brush color. Hold down the shift key. Left click on the corner and drag to resize proportionally. Position the shadow layer at the appropriate location. This is all that I have for you in this video. I hope you like it. If you do, please hit the like button. Please share this video to any of your friends and relatives. Share to anyone that want to learn a skill or anyone that wants to get a side job with any of these skills. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe, subscribe, and subscribe. I would really appreciate your subscription. In our next video, we're going to look at elements. Elements allows us to communicate our message clearly. Whilst the principles of design are what we do to the design, and that is what determines how successful the design will be in communicating our message. So join us in our next video as we explore the principles, practices and elements of design that are necessary in bringing our design to life. So for all of that and more, I will see you in the next video.